As we head into our this and that section, this is a collection of very important topics for both your exam studies and real world networking, but they're not as large, say, as static routing or some of the other things we'll look at with switching. So I'm putting all these in one section, but please don't think this is some kind of miscellaneous section where, oh, you don't have to study this stuff, because believe me, you do have to study this stuff. And we're going to start here with timestamps and then move to logging, because to this point in the course, I have disabled timestamps to make our log messages easier to read. And I wasn't even really calling them log messages. I was probably calling them console messages, if anything. But in real world networking, your timestamps are almost always going to be on. And what you'll tend to see at the top of the config of a real world router here, and I know I've got one line slightly cut off. Let me go down there where we have no service timestamps debug uptime, no service timestamps log uptime, and no service password encryption. Well, I configured this at the beginning of every lab because the timestamps tend to get in the way when you just want to read the console message, and especially when you're first studying something. And so for this section, of course, we'll be turning them back on, and we'll leave them on a couple times during the course because I want you to get used to seeing them with the timestamps on as well. But again, you'll always see this near the top of the config, the router config, of course, and you will not see every service mentioned. You're going to see timestamps mentioned. You're going to see service password encryption mentioned. We're going to spend a few minutes here with that as well. But let me show you the full list of services. And let's just say I was going to turn on a service. And holy cow, look at all these services. You do not have to know all these services now. <laughs> and you may never learn every single service here. Uh, unless you're going for your IE where you're just trying basically to learn everything because you could go a long time and not use some of these services even in production networks but it is handy to have them and the ones we are concerning ourselves with primarily here password encryption that's coming up later in this section or right now it's all about timestamps now let me just do a control Z there and that's enough to get a console message this is actually a, a logging message I tend to call it a console message because we're getting it as a result of being directly connected to this device via the console port. So we're going to see these messages. And again, we have the timestamps cut off. As you'll see in a moment, the time would appear at the beginning of the message. And then we've got a sys and then a five and then a config underscore i. And what is the deal with that five? That is the severity level of the message. And this is going to be, frankly, a good thing for you to memorize. There are eight different levels. And I'm going to have a chart here for you in a minute. We're going to see a couple of them in action. But the real way that you use them in real-world networking is sometimes you don't want every console message or every other kind of log message, which we'll go over. Uh, you want to limit the amount of log messages you're getting. You need to know these severity levels. So that is all coming. But right now, let's have a look at the timestamp options. And here we've got debug and log. Those are our choices. And we're going to go ahead and go with log here. So that's what we're most concerned about. And we have date time and uptime. And they're exactly what they sound like. In real world networking, generally, you're going to see date time instead of uptime. But uh, let's go ahead and go with date time and then look at our options. And we've got quite a few options here. We could use a local time zone for our timestamps. We have an msec option, include milliseconds in the timestamp. That seems pretty detailed, but there's a good reason we might use those, and we'll get to that when we configure it. Uh, we could show the time zone in the timestamp. We could include the year in the timestamp. So let's just go ahead and go with what we have right there and see what the message now looks like. Oh, got to do a control Z there to generate something. And now we see a timestamp at the beginning of the message. And you can see where you look at a couple of these in a row when you're just trying to read six console messages when you're studying something. They get a little annoying, and that's why I take the dates out of most of the course. So we've got November 25th, 12-28-53. That all sounds great, and maybe that's all we want, and maybe it's not. Uh, I hate to insult you by even saying this part, but if you wanted to add the year, you know, if you're really going to archive your log messages, you can put the year option there. And there we have 2016 added to the timestamp. And I'll show you the, uh, the MSEC option here as well, because sometimes when you're troubleshooting, maybe more advanced troubleshooting, measuring in seconds is not enough. 
maybe you need milliseconds, like, you know, an Olympic pool race. It may look to us like, you know, five people touch the wall at the same time, but they don't, and we need milliseconds. That's going to happen in troubleshooting once in a while as well. So let's see if we can add milliseconds to the end of that command. Can we put in more than one option? Yes, we can. We can still put msec in there if we wanted to. So we'll go with that. And we'll see what that timestamp looks like. And now you see it's even starting to hang off the side because we've added milliseconds to our count. And there you have it at the end with 0.559. So finally, if we wanted to show the time zone, could we still do that on the back of that timestamp? Yes, we could. So this is one long service message, and you're rarely going to see them this long in the real world, but I want to show you all the options that it can. And then finally, November 25th, 2016, 1230-41.991, time zone of UTC, and then we get our syslog message, which is hanging all over the place now. But you can see, really, I mean, there's nothing complicated here at all but you really can customize these as far as you want to. And that goes for the debug messages as well. Let's go ahead and take a quick look there. And there's your debug. There's your date time and your uptime. I want to show you what the uptime looks like too. We'll go back. And you can see your options are exactly the same. So we're not going to change that right now because we're not going to run any debugs. But let's say, let's remove that really long time stamp. And we'll take that one off. And we'll go with log and we'll go with uptime. The options here are quite limited. <laughs> and by quite limited, I mean they are absolutely, totally non-existent. If you say you want uptime, that's what you're getting. Let's go ahead and do a control Z there. And there you go. So this router's been up for an hour and 16 minutes and 53 seconds. And let me make absolutely sure of that. Let's do a quick, see if that'll generate a message. And there we go. And you can see that these are all now time stamped and it's up time. And you can see, you know, exactly how many seconds it is. Again, real world networking, you're almost always going to use date time. Uh, up time can get a little tricky to work with because some people are going to look at that and not know that there's an uptime option and think, oh, that's, you know, 117 in the morning. No, it's not. It's just that the router's been up for an hour and 17 minutes. We've already gone over the network time protocol, and I talked there about the importance of synchronized time throughout your network, but you can really see where synchronized time is going to come in with, the, with uh, your timestamps because what can happen, obviously, you know, you're pulling logs from four different routers, and then you want to compare them. And if the times are not synced or, you know, one router says it's 1970 and another says it's 2016, it's going to be kind of hard to see, you know, if certain network operations are being synced or you need to do some troubleshooting. If your routers are 46 years behind the time, you need to do a little basic troubleshooting there first. Now, this is one way to see the messages. Fantastic way to see it. Nothing wrong with this. But we're not always going to be at the console port of the device that we want to see in action. So what we might do instead is choose to send the devices to a syslog server, and also we might want to see the messages um, via a telnet connection. The commands there are a little bit different, which won't surprise you, but we'll take a look at the syslog server config coming up next.